how to come out. And the important part of this video is that it's not just for LGBTQ people. Check it out. Get smarter with Blair Imani. Hi and welcome, my name is Blair Imani. I'm an author, educator, and historian, and today we're going to be getting smarter about coming out and how to come out, if that's right for you. Let's get started. And before we dive in, I wanted to say that this is brought to you by my Smarties on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com forward slash Blair Imani and you'll join my community of Smarties there, see exclusive content, get live Q and A's, and a bunch of material that I don't release anywhere else. Coming out is not only about sharing our LGBTQ plus identities with other people. It is also importantly a journey of self-acceptance, self-understanding and self-love. Coming out also has a great deal to do with self-definition, which is the process of figuring out what to call ourselves. A key point here is that we generally know who we are. We wake up, we go to sleep, we know who we are. But the language that we use to describe ourselves and the language that we share with other people, that might be what is a little complicating factor. But generally, we know who we are. It's not usually that we have self-doubt because we don't know who we are, it's because we've been made to doubt ourselves by systems of oppression. And today's systems of oppression are cisnormativity, the idea that the gender you are assigned at birth is the one that you have to identify with and be throughout your life, which is not true and is actually very much incorrect, and heteronormativity, the idea that being heterosexual or in a straight relationship or being straight is the only way to validly be loved or to exist. Those things are not true, but those are the systems of oppression that we'll be focusing on today. When talking about coming out, we have to look at two things, our personal identities and our social identities. Personal identity relates to how we understand ourselves. So I'm Blair, I'm black, I'm bisexual, I'm Muslim, I love Star Trek, right? Those are my personal identities. And whether or not I share that with you, it's still true about myself. Then we have our social identities. And sometimes this side of us is more emphasized because it's the side that more people define for us. It's the way society or others perceive us. Sometimes, and actually often, our personal identities and our social identities do not align. But that's not our fault. Usually social identities have to do a lot with stereotypes and perceptions and assumptions, whereas our personal identity is our personal truth. And the way we describe that truth may change over the course of our lives, but it's real, genuine, and valid every single time. I'm sometimes not understood in my social identity to be bisexual, even though it's right there in my like Instagram bio, what the heck, but it's because of biphobia and bi erasure and this idea that bisexuals don't exist. And it's like, hello, I'm right here. But my personal identity of being bisexual is still there, even if it's not respected or seen or acknowledged in the social identity. That's not because I'm not bisexual enough, that's because of more systems of oppression that connect back to our two systems of oppression per the day, which are cisnormativity and heteronormativity. This one connecting more to heteronormativity. And it's important to recognize that we don't have to prove ourselves to anyone else. That does not have to be part of your coming out story. And so let's get into that. So I'll briefly tell you about my coming out story. During the early 2000s, there would be a two part or like multi-part episode uh, from a TV show that was aimed at teens talking about coming out. And it was framed as, if I don't come out, then I'm lying to my family, I'm lying to my friends, and I'm not a whole person. And it's like, dude, no, you're already a whole person. But for narrative purposes, that was really emphasized. The idea of being broken because we're not out, but that's not true. I mean, sometimes we are made to feel broken by a society that is intent on breaking us up, but we're whole and we have to affirm that. And once we affirm ourselves, no one can take that away. And let's get rid of this idea of living a lie because the fact is living our truth, that's the only thing we know how to do. And if we have to masquerade or hide parts of that personal identity to survive in that social realm, that's not our fault. That's those systems of oppression that we're focusing on today, cisnormativity and heteronormativity. And the fact that we tell people that they're living a lie feeds into this idea that LGBTQ plus people are deceitful or are liars or are sneaky or are hiding who we truly are. But the fact is sometimes bravery isn't just being out, but being closeted in a space where coming out might directly harm you. The only thing you need to do if you're in a situation where you can't come out is survive and get to a point where you can have your chosen family, where you can have your friends, family members, and loved ones that you choose for yourself that affirm who you are because you deserve that and that is possible for you. And no, you're not living a lie just because you're not able to share your personal identity in the social space. So back to my coming out story. I've known that I was not straight even before I knew what straight was. That's because uh, all of the depictions of relationships 
were pretty heterosexual, heteronormative, right? I didn't see Aladdin with another Aladdin. I wanted to be with Red Jasmine. I, I loved Sailor Moon, but I also hated Sailor Moon because of how it made me feel. It made me feel like I was an outcast because I wasn't interested in Tuxedo Mask. I was interested in Sailor Mercury. Hey. And so these things complicated my life but I knew who I was all along the way. And fortunately, I never had to sit through something like going to a religious space where people were telling me that I was going to go to hell. I was fortunate to be able to affirm myself all along the way. And that came from within. But once I saw this episode of Degrassi, this two part episode where Marco was having this crisis of self because he was living a lie, I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm lying to my mom because she doesn't know this thing about me. So when I finally came out, I was feeling this immense pressure from TV shows and media, even though I pretty much knew who I was. I didn't have the language to describe it. I didn't have that self-definition aspect yet, but I knew I was a little bit more rainbow than the other kids. <laughs> and so I sat my mom down and I said, mom, I have something very important to tell you. And she was like, Blair, hurry up. I have work to do. <laughs> and I was like, mom, I'm a lesbian. And she was like, no, I think you're bisexual. And I said, what is that? And also you stole my moment, what the heck? But moms will be moms. And she actually did something really important. She took me to the GLAAD media reference website. This is in like 2008. And we went on and we looked up these different definitions of bisexuality and it fit. And something that was really important for me was the idea that you don't have to have a sexual history before coming out or knowing who you are. And the reason why we have this idea that you're only as queer as your sexual history is because of someone named, I think he was Dr. Alfred Kinsey. He created something called the Kinsey scale and it was to plot human sexuality. Of course, he used a very small sample size. Primarily white men are actually exclusively white men. And it was important at the time, right? Because it said, hey, gay people exist, which was like very revolutionary. But on the other hand, it very harmfully said that human sexuality is on a scale of one to six, uh, being exclusively homosexual and then exclusively heterosexual. So I had looked that up because it was readily available and we had talked about it in science class, like it was actually scientific. Um, and I plotted myself as a four. I'm like, I'm pretty homosexual. And I remember seeing this with my friends. They would say, oh, I'm bisexual, but I'm like 50% this and like 50% that. But bisexuality isn't necessarily being half straight and half gay. It's a whole sexual orientation onto its own. And that's part of the problem with self-definition is that sometimes those systems of oppression that we talked about earlier will conflate the truth of what these definitions mean for us, which is why it's important to seek out reference guides, whether that's through GLAAD or Trevor Project or well-researched materials. Because when we talk about bisexuality in the media, when I was a kid in the early 2000s, it was often about greediness or not being able to choose or being indecisive or being a phase. And that's one of the biggest barriers to coming out is the idea that who we are is already invalid and that we're just not getting who we are correct. But we know who we are and whether or not we're able to name that with the current language we have or we have to develop new language to capture that, that's something that we will discover on our journey of life. But coming out and how to do it needs to be on your terms. And it's true to say that not everybody who comes out is able to come out on their own terms. There's something really harmful called outing which is when people disclose your truth, your orientation, your gender identity to other people without your consent. Sometimes it happens in the case of bullying. Sometimes it happens in the case of media or folks trying to, oh, I'm gonna get to the root of this. I'm gonna tell people about who they are and not thinking about the consequences because the fact is until we live in a society free of homophobia, free of transphobia, anti-LGBTQ bias and hate, coming out isn't something that is a safe thing to do for anyone. I mean, if you're extremely privileged and you're able to be in a situation where you're insulated from that type of hate and bias, sure but you already probably know when you wanna come out or how, or if you want to at all. Because the other thing is that maybe it's not the fault of LGBTQ plus people for not saying who we are, but the fact that society assumes that we are cisgender and straight until proven otherwise. That's the problem. Not LGBTQ plus folks just existing. You actually don't have to come out. You aren't more valid for coming out. And people who aren't out or who aren't able to be out those folks are still part of our community, which is why it's important to create spaces and to speak about coming out in a way that actually reflects reality, not the myths and the lies and the assumptions that media and that our systems of oppression and our society perpetuate. Coming out is up to you. So let's spend some time for those of us who are in a position to be able to come out. The fact is that coming out doesn't have to be grandiose and extreme. I mean, I'm kind of the queen of that. I accidentally came out on Fox News in 2017. I don't recommend doing that. It was definitely like the least nurturing 
possible option for me, but hey, it happened and you know, hashtag no regrets. But coming out doesn't have to be dramatic or theatrical. It's kind of like a proposal for a wedding, right? You don't have to choreograph all of your friends together in a park and then pop the question. It can be at a private dinner. It can be something that happens casually. It's really up to you. It can be lighthearted. You can have jokes. You can do it to a song. You can make a rap song about it. You can do interpretive dance. It's, it's so truly up to you. And it honestly doesn't happen one time. I've come out many different times. I mean, I came out to my mom. I came out to my dad, the rest of my family, then the whole world on accident. It's so up to you the way that you come out or don't. Because like I said, until we live in a society free from anti-LGBTQ hate and bias, coming out is something very vulnerable. And for folks who are on the receiving end of coming out, just make sure to be respectful, consider your context. And one thing that irks me, but might be cool for somebody else is the idea of, oh, I already knew, no big deal. Because that can be really stressful, especially for young people, because the idea that they haven't been good enough at hiding the aspects of themselves that might make them more vulnerable to those systems of oppression. So really look at it case by case. Try not to take up space in the other person's moment. And a good thing to ask is honestly just, how do you feel about this? How can I support you? Are you excited? What can we do to move forward? Those are great ways to figure out what makes sense for the person in question, because it's hard to know in every situation. Coming out to one person might be easier than coming out to somebody else. It's really situational, but just move forward with humanity, with mutual respect, with love, with compassion, and you'll be all right. Like I said, coming out, it's not something that's just exclusive to LGBTQ plus people. LGBTQ plus people should be the center focus, but it's true to say that we can all contribute to making it easier for folks to come out if they want to. And remembering that not everybody needs to, wants to, or can. We have to hold these truths and these nuances together. The best thing to do is to affirm yourself, get to that journey of self-definition and self-understanding and understand that it's okay if you can't declare your personal identity in the social space. It's not okay in the sense that it's all right that systems of oppression exist, but it's all right that you're surviving and you're doing your best. That is important. And yes, you can celebrate pride whether you're out, not out, semi out, or don't even want to come out. You're here, you're queer, and you're valid. And I love you. Well, Smarties, that's another episode of Get Smarter with Blair Imani. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you can be the first one to comment on my posts. And while you're here, check out one of my previous videos. Let's keep it going.